Greetings, Earthlings. Uh, today we're taking another look at the Nova 445 and um, what I've done to allow it to run as an original Nova and also to have a, uh, a monitor in ROM that uh, will allow it to do other, other stuff which aren't necessarily Nova compatible. So the idea again there is that um, I want to be able to run ultimately Data General's RDOS operating system on it. So it has to emulate an original Nova completely in order to run that. But I also wanted to have uh, a monitor in ROM like uh, typical, uh, you know, modern, more modern microprocessors do, microprocessor systems do. But I didn't want that ROM to be taking up any memory space that RDOS could use. The Nova, as you'll recall, or maybe you don't know, has a 32K word address space, 15 bits uh, address space. Uh, so 64K bytes, but uh, it, it's all word address. So uh, that's, that's actually what these chips are here. These are each 32K by eight. So we get 32K words by 16. Uh, which is not a whole lot of memory, especially for a system like RDOS. RDOS already uses, uh, makes extensive use of overlays and stuff to make the most use of that limited address space and leave you some space left over to run, <laughs> to run your program. Um, but this uh, Fairchild chip, the F9445, has a 64K mode, which supports 64K words of memory. And how does it do that? Well, what it does is it will present 16 bits to uh, the address bus. But what uh, Data General, the original Nova, does is if you're doing indirect addressing, so just uh, a brief... Uh, review of that, um, indirect addressing says, if you say, for instance, jump indirect through a location, it does not jump to that location, but picks up the data in that location and uses that as the target address. So with the Nova, if the high address bit is set, that implies another level of indirection. So it says, don't jump to where I'm telling you, but go and pick up that address. And that's where you want to go. And it can actually go to an infinite number of levels of indirection. That's not used that much, the multiple levels of indirection, but it's the way they built it. And so it, it needs to uh, remain supported. Well, in the 64K mode that the Fairchild processor has, they eliminate that. You can only have a single level of indirection and now the high order bit is simply an address bit. Uh, there's, it complicates things with byte accesses as well, but we don't need to worry about that for, for this uh, discussion. Okay, so will RDOS run in 64K mode? Well, I wouldn't count on it. So therefore, uh, we have to have it not in 64K mode if we're running RDOS, and, um, but I'm running in 64K mode if I'm running in my monitor, because what I do is I will map, there's the ROM and RAM. Okay, so there's 8K of, 8K words of ROM, 8K words of RAM. I uh, didn't feel a need to, to fill it up with say 16 and 16 or eight and 24. Um, you can do a lot in, uh, with that amount of memory. Uh, in fact, I could probably build a basic interpreter in 8K words. Um, so these can be put into high memory, which gives full access when we're running out of ROM code to that 8K plus this 32K, which is pretty cool. Uh, but when we're running RDOS, those need to disappear. When we first boot up the processor, it's in 32K mode, right? Original Nova emulation mode. 
So we have to have a way to, well, I mean, there's an instruction to put it into 64K mode. But the other thing is when it boots up, it wants, it executes the instruction at location, now we're in Octal again, 177777. Uh, FFFF if you're, <laughs> no, it's not FFF. It would be 7FFF if you're, if you're a hex, uh, if you're hex minded. Um, so I need, I need the, this memory to be mapped into low memory when we first start up, and then we need a way to kick it up into high memory uh, when, when we want to, uh, to get it out of the way. And, uh, and also, um, uh, you know, to allow, to allow this memory to be accessed so that even if we don't leave it in 64K mode, uh, when we go and, and, and boot RDOS, um, it will just see this memory, and that memory will just be non-existent. So how do we do that? Well, that's what flip-flops are for. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to see this, or I may just put it up as a graphic on the screen rather than trying to hold, uh, hold this paper up. But um, there's a flip-flop here, and on uh, reset, that gets cleared. Okay, so if that's if that flip flop is cleared, then this output is a one, which forces this output to a one. That's my monitor signal. Uh, so um, anytime monitor is set, we're going to be accessing the monitor memory instead of the main memory. Uh, so how do we switch it out of that startup mode? Well, it gets set. You can see this line coming down from here. If you should access a, a memory location with the high bit set, then that comes around to here, and that will set it to 1. Uh, and and when, then when it's set to 1, it will stay at 1, OK? Uh, so and then, and then at that point, this is 0, so we're strictly going by the high memory address bit to indicate whether we're accessing monitor memory or not. So I have a test program here just to kind of to kind of test it. Um, it's just running memory diagnostics on the uh, on the 32k RAM. So we start at 7777. 77777. There's five of them. Okay. And that says jump indirect through dot minus one, which is seven 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 six, that says MR test, which is six zero 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 zero, which is the beginning of the ROM memory. Okay. At the beginning of ROM, we enable sixty four K mode. Now that says now we can put a high order address bit of one onto the bus. Okay, and we jump indirect dot minus one, which is here. And that says at high mem. The at here sets the high order bit in this word. So we've got one six zero 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 three. Okay. Up until this point, the uh, the monitor memory, ROM and RAM, are mapped into the low thirty two k. When it sees that high address bit, that flip flop bit gets set and um, and the memory is now accessible in high memory. Well, it was always accessible as high memory, um, even when we started up, because going back to this, any time that bit is set, it's, it's the output of this OR gate is one, so it's accessing monitor memory. However, by actually accessing it, and again, remember, if we were in 32K mode here, this indirect would say pick up, don't jump to that location, but pick up the value in that location and use that as the target of the jump. So then it would want to jump to 176400. Well, there's another level of indirection. So we'll go to 6400, which uh, has nothing in it. And uh, so who knows where it would have ended up. Um, but since we've got a 64K mode, uh, that says jump to address 160003, and that's here. 
and then we just proceed as normal. Then what I have is uh, some memory tests where I zero all of memory, and then I'll set it all to ones, and then I set the address, and then I set to alternating ones and zeros, and then, and then the inverse of that. Uh, and that actually runs for a while. It does fail eventually, and so I've got to figure out what's wrong there, but we can see that happen here. Well, I don't know, I don't think I'll run it test long enough for you to see it fail. But we're gonna see the carry light blink. Now what's going on there is that in each test, I initialize the carry to zero. Uh, sub O it says pre-initialize the carry to one, and then the sub will have a carry out which will uh, complement the carry or toggle it, and so it, it starts at zero. Uh, fill the memory, and then I do a uh, reset uh, the uh, index register, but that's just sub three comma three. So the carry was still at zero at that point. So that's gonna complement it again. So that turns the carry on. And so while it's uh, testing the memory, so it sets the loop to set and then I'll loop to test. While it's setting, the carry's off. While it's testing, the carry's on. Same thing for each test. So we can see it running there. And so that's how long it takes to scan through uh, 32K words of memory uh, is one blink cycle, is both, is both writing 32K full words and reading them back and verifying them. So that's pretty cool, that's pretty fast. So that's all I have for now. Uh, just, a little, uh, just a little update showing a little more progress. This was more software than hardware because I didn't have to uh, add any hardware or make any mods to the board to do this. It's just, it's just testing that it works the way I intended and uh, except that it ultimately does fail. Uh, I, uh, it, it is working so I can, uh, I can proceed to, uh, to play the next thing. Well, besides tracking that down, then will be to get the, uh, the video card going.